Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to talk you through how I upcycled this old disgusting frying pan that I kept for a whole year knowing that one day I'm going to redo it, I'm going to upcycle it and it's going to look great. So this is what it looked like before I started working on it and this is what it looks like now. It is proudly hanging up in my kitchen now. I smile every time I look at it and my partner keeps telling me that you know it's a pan, right? But I still like it. <laughs> and um, hopefully this video will inspire some of you to go and find interesting things around your house that you never would have thought of decorating, especially right now when it's not as easy to go out and just buy something to decorate. This is probably going to be a long video. There was quite a few steps that I took and I don't know how I'm going to do this voiceover, but we'll get through it together. So let's get started. So the first thing that I did is give it a good wash in the sink and then degrease it more using methylated spirit. So just making sure that you get all of the grease and grime off of it. And then I applied one coat of Difficult Surface Primer all over the pan. This was also a very awkward thing to film, so please bear with me if you're not always able to see the whole thing. It turned out that the pan was a lot bigger than the things that I usually film, so my setup isn't really that suited for things that are so big. And then once the primer was dry, I applied a coat of white chalk paint and that helped even out all of the uneven bits and also just gave some extra coverage. Next I applied my decoupage paper onto my pan, so I decided to decorate the outside part of the pan. And this is a picture that I downloaded from Digital Collage Club, there is going to be a link in the description below for you. And um, there's also going to be a discount code in the description as well for you if you wanted to sign up with them. If you wanted to get access to these beautiful pictures that I've been using in a lot of my projects lately. So I printed this picture off on photo paper just using my normal inkjet printer and if you have some clear sticky tape I would recommend if you're using photo paper thin it out so I just soaked my paper in water and left it for about two to three minutes and then turned it halfway through just making sure that water gets in everywhere and so water loosens up the fibers of the paper and it helps the glue seep in and actually glue down your picture so then I applied one coat of Mod Podge on the bottom bit of the pan and put my paper onto it. Then using my cloth napkin I kind of dragged all of the air bubbles and excess glue out making sure that the paper was glued down really nicely. And then just using my nails I ripped off the excess corner bits that I didn't need. The plan was always for me to have this circular bit and then frame it with molds and then applied another layer of Mod Podge over the top and left it all to dry. So next up it was time to apply mold. So as always I'm using DAS air drying clay, trade grade PVA glue to glue the clay down and redesign with Prima molds. So I went for this kind of leafy frame around the decoupage part, a different kind of border from another Prima mold going around the outside edge and then again a leafy design going up the handle of the pan. And then I left it all to dry. Once the molds were dry I painted all of the molds and all of the non-decoupage parts brown. At first I thought I'm gonna paint everything this kind of beigey colour and it didn't work out. I couldn't get the colour right for some reason. I would really struggled to mix up the, the kind of beigey colour that is on the decoupage picture. So I gave up and went for brown instead. Paints that I'm using here, literally a mix of all sorts of paints that I have. So acrylics and chalk paints of all sorts of different brands. Um, I used blacks, browns, uh, yellow, beige, white, everything. <laughs> when it comes to paint, I usually really, really struggle to just kind of stick to one type or one brand because I find that I never have the right color. So I end up having to mix them. <laughs> Once my brown was dry, I used these beigey leftovers from another project that I had and a dry natural bristle brush and just brushed on the paint everywhere. So as you can see, I'm not trying to get in everywhere. I'm leaving the creases and crevices because I want the brown paint to still show through. It kind of creates dimension as you will see further down. I will use lots of different paints and lots of different waxes later on. And in my opinion, it is all important 
all of the different paints and shades that you end up adding will be what creates dimension and gives depth to your piece. So if you're working on something and you've applied one or two coats of paint, you've done your base color, then you've done your highlights and you have a look at it and it still doesn't seem right. Most likely it doesn't mean that you've done something wrong or you chose wrong colors. Most likely it means that it's just not finished. Once I had painted it, I applied one coat of water-based gloss varnish to prepare it for glazing. So the next step that we're gonna do is gonna be glazing and gloss varnish is gonna help you wipe away the excess paint. It's better to use gloss, matte and satin will work, but I find that gloss tends to be a lot slidier, a lot less porous, so it helps wipe away the excess. And then it was time to glaze. So the color mix that I have here is green and blue and brown. So I was just kind of trying to um, get some shades and colors close to what you can see on the peacock's feathers and so as you can see I'm kind of working in these small sections that I have um, divided by the molds so I smudge the paint all over the place and then use my cloth napkin to wipe away the excess and so as you can see I'm not trying to get the paint out from every crease and crevice some of the paint still stays inside there and once again it kind of creates dimension and even when you have wiped it away it still gives the whole thing a bit of a greenish tint I like to refer to it as a filter it's almost like a photo filter that you would apply um, onto pictures and once again I do the exact same thing on the inside of the pan as well And then I went crazy with the waxes. So this wax that I'm using is by Finnebar. This one is in the color Peacock and I applied it all over the molds. Next I used the same Art Alchemy wax but in a different color. This one is Fire Ruby and I applied it on the round bits of the leafy molds. And then the next wax is Little Birdie wax. So this one is Moss Green and I applied it to the leaves but only to the um, inside half of the leaf so if that makes sense hopefully you can see it okay there and then the last wax that i'm using is vintage gold this one is also finnebar's wax and i applied it to the outside mold and then after having a good look at my pan so kind of i took it away from my desk sat it on my sofa looking at it from a different angle at a different light and even though i had done so much to it already it still wasn't um it still wasn't popping <laughs> it still didn't seem right there was still something missing so i um so i felt like what was missing was a little bit of um, this darker dimension on the outside of the mold, a bit of shadow. And so to create shadow, I used this black acrylic paint and a natural bristle brush. And so what I do is, again, I pick up a tiny bit of paint, brush most of it off onto my plate, and then just using the leftovers that I have on the brush, I brush them along the edges of the mold and then the molds on the handle, inner edge of the outside mold. And then lastly, to seal it all, I used Polyvine Decorators Varnish in dead flat finish and I applied three coats to the decoupage part and I just did one coat on the rest of the pan. So once it was all dry, I applied the paper flowers. So these paper flowers are by Little Birdie Crafts. And so I just glued them down using my hot glue gun. It kind of took me a little while to figure out where to put them and how to, how to arrange them. But in the end, I just decided to do the larger composition over the top and then just the little flowers on the bottom of the pan. If I had more of these flowers, I probably would have extended the top part, made it a bit more gradient, but I didn't have a lot. So this is what I've got to work with. Once I was finished with the flowers, I realized that they kind of stood out a little bit too much in comparison to the rest of the pan. So I decided to add a little bit more highlights so that they didn't like scream in your face. And so I used my Pebeo contour liner. And once again, I went a bit crazy and polka dotted all over the place <laughs> in between the two molded parts. And then I also added some dots on top of the flowers themselves. Then I decided that I needed to add a bow. So just a normal satin ribbon wouldn't have done it. It would have looked a bit too 
too out of place. I decided to make it a bit vintage. So what I did is scrunch it up in a little ball, tie it up and then boiled it in a pan just with normal water for about two, three minutes. Took it out, let it dry. And when it was done, I tied it around the handle and I used a little bit of my water-based varnish on the actual bow itself. And what it does is it makes it a little bit more rigid so that when it's hanging, it doesn't the bow doesn't like flop down and then finally we've reached the last step of decorating after taking it away from my desk and just having a little look at it i realized that the flowers and the bow still stood out a little bit too much they looked a bit too um, bright too new so to age them i just took a little bit of a brown acrylic paint and dry brushed it onto the bow and onto the flowers just made them a little bit dirty uh, made them a little bit more aged and vintage and that's it and there you go we have finally reached the end of this project i really hope that you enjoyed it i hope that you learned something new i hope that maybe i have managed to inspire you to go and have a look in your kitchen and living room and sheds and everywhere and see what unusual objects you can find to decorate make sure to check out the description of this video for all of the links there will be discount codes for digital collage club and also for little birdie craft if you wanted to sign up or order from them as always if you would like to connect with me links for my social media instagram facebook and so on are going to be in the description as well if you have any suggestions for this video make sure to leave those in the comments down below please um, and let me know what you think to this pan. I really want to know your opinion. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!